There are stars that shouldn't exist. By all classical logic, these giants were never meant to form. Because when a star becomes too massive, it begins to destroy itself. The radiation at its core grows so intense, it pushes away the very gas that's trying to fall in. It's almost as if the star is resisting its own birth. For decades, astronomers were certain no star could grow beyond 30 times the mass of our sun. But the universe had other plans. Out there, we've found cosmic giants, stars that shine millions of times brighter than the sun, and some way over a hundred solar masses, as if they're defying the very limits we once believed were absolute. And if you could stand near one of these stellar behemoths, you wouldn't just see light, you'd feel pressure. A pressure so immense, it doesn't just burn, it crushes atoms, it bends space, and it challenges the very laws of physics we hold sacred. So how can something like this even exist? What kind of forces allow such monsters to form? Welcome to Astro, where we explore paradoxes, beauty, and the most profound mysteries of the cosmos. And today, though we're venturing into one of the most astonishing Imagine looking up at the night sky, far beyond the reach of any telescope, into a distant corner of the universe, over 160,000 light years away. Out there, something extraordinary is happening. A massive cosmic being is burning itself alive, just to exist. Its name is BAT 99-98. But this isn't just any star. It's a, what we call a Wolf Riot star. One of the hottest, brightest, and most bizarre types of stars we've ever discovered. BAT 99-98 is more than 200 times the mass of our sun. It, it radiates with incomprehensible energy, and it's destined to live for only a few million years? A blink on the timescale of the cosmos. But here's the real mystery by the rules of classical physics. This star shouldn't exist. When stars begin to form, they collapse under gravity, pulling gas inward. But as their core heats up, they start to emit radiation fast. Eventually, that radiation becomes so intense, it pushes the surrounding gas away. It acts like a limit, a physical ceiling. Once a forming star hits that threshold, it should stop growing, that threshold is around 30 solar masses. And yet, here we are, staring at a star more than six times that limit. So, how do these cosmic monsters exist? Take Cepheus AW2, for example, a young forming protostar. It's just 2,300 light years away, still in the womb of its stellar nursery, still gathering gas and dust and it's already over 10 times the mass of the sun, with no sign of stopping. For years, astronomers have watched this region with curiosity, but only recently, with ultra-sensitive arrays like the VLA have we seen through the clouds. And into the chaos, what we're witnessing is wild, a massive protostar actively feeding, pulling in material, even as powerful radiation tries to blow it all away these stars by just breaking the rules. They're doing it in the most chaotic, unstable environments imaginable. Dense clouds, violent turbulence, relentless radiation. So we have to ask, is there something our physics hasn't figured out yet? Or maybe the universe has its own hidden tools, secret pathways that let it build these colossal cosmic children? The truth may lie deeper in a place where radiation can't reach. But somehow, matter still finds its way in. And that's where we're heading next. Let's imagine a star being born, deep within the heart of a dense, massive gas cloud. Gravity is at work. It pulls everything inward, compressing the cloud from all directions. 
The temperature climbs. Pressure rises. Hydrogen atoms are crushed together with unimaginable force. Until suddenly, a flash of light bursts forth. The first spark of nuclear fusion. The star it is alive. But from that very moment, a new force awakens. It is one that pushes back radiation pressure. Because light doesn't just shine, it pushes. Photons race outward from the star's core, slamming into anything in their path. Electrons, ions, dust, all still trying to fall inward. Every photon is a gentle shove, but together they form a wall. And if the star is bright enough, those collisions become strong enough to stop the collapse altogether even push gas outward. In astrophysics, this invisible threshold has a name. It's called the Eddington Limit. It marks the point where radiation pressure balances gravity. Beyond this point, no more matter should be able to fall in. For most stars, this limit kicks in at about 30 times the mass of our sun. Cross it, and a star becomes so luminous, its own light acts as a shield a kind of cosmic barrier pushing back against its own growth. Now, imagine standing near such a star. Everything around you vibrates with light and heat, but instead of being pulled in, you feel a steady force pushing outward, like standing in the path of a storm made of pure radiation. And this is the paradox, because across the cosmos, we find stars that break this rule, not just one or two, hundreds, some with 50, 100, even over 200 times the mass of our sun. So what's going on? Is the Eddington limit not as universal as we thought? Are there hidden processes that allow stars to grow even when they shouldn't? Or maybe our theory is missing something. To find answers, we need to look closer. We need to understand how stars actually grow, how they continue to feed, even as their own light tries to drive matter away. And that's where the story turns, to something strange in powerful the accretion disk. Something extraordinary is happening inside the hidden birthplaces of stars a silent, intense process where matter keeps pouring into the center, fighting against the very light, trying to push it away. When a massive gas cloud begins to collapse under its own gravity, it doesn't just fall inward. It spins, and that spin creates something remarkable. A swirling structure begins to form, flat, wide, and fast-moving, a cosmic frisbee of gas, orbiting the newborn star at its core. This is the accretion disk. And it's not just a side effect. It's the main highway for stellar growth. Picture a giant whirlpool in space. Most of the gas spirals around, caught in orbit. But a small, crucial fraction slips inward, slowly, relentlessly, like water draining into the center of a cosmic sink. But here's the problem. We've never truly seen this happen. Massive stars form in some of the most remote, dust-filled corners of the galaxy. And that dust is thick. Thick enough to block almost all visible light. Standard telescopes? Almost useless. So astronomers had to turn to something far more powerful. The Very Large Array. A sprawling network of 27 massive radio antennas spread across the desert of New Mexico. But even with the VLA, they needed something else, a signal, a tracer, something to follow. And surprisingly, that clue came from something astonishingly ordinary. Ammonia? Yes, the same molecule found in household cleaners. But in space, ammonia becomes something extraordinary. It emits radio waves at precise detectable frequencies, frequencies that can cut straight through thick clouds of dust even better. Ammonia only glows in extremely dense regions, so it lights up exactly what astronomers care about most, the heart of the accretion disk. 
where gas is still falling into the star. In a recent study, researchers pointed the VLA towards Cepheus A, home of the massive protostar known as HW2, and there they saw it. Streams of ammonia plunging inward at near free fall speeds, feeding the star. Despite the radiation pushing back, it was the first time we've directly observed material resisting that force and fueling a supermassive star. It confirmed what many had long suspected. Yes, accretion disks really do form around massive stars, but it also raised a bigger, deeper question. If gas can still make its way in, even with radiation pressure fighting back, is something else helping? Something beyond the disk itself? Maybe these disks aren't working alone. Let's zoom out. Young a disk beyond the star, situated to the wider cosmic neighborhood where vast rivers of matter may be flowing inward, quietly, from every direction. We know that accretion disks help young stars grow by channeling material inward. But these disks aren't infinite. Without a fresh supply of gas, they would eventually run dry, like a lake with no incoming stream. So what keeps them going? The answer lies in something we've only just begun to observe clearly, a quiet, mysterious process known as streamers. These are long, narrow filaments of gas flowing in from the outer reaches of space, feeding directly into the accretion disk. Think of them as invisible rivers of matter, threading through the darkness, stretching across thousands of astronomical units. They twist and ripple. They don't move in straight lines. Their paths are sculpted by gravity, magnetic fields, and turbulence. And slowly, they funnel fresh fuel into the growing star. Recent observations from the VLA and ALMA telescopes have revealed these streamers around HW2 and other massive star-forming regions. They don't just exist. They're well-defined and they're massive. Some carry tens of solar masses worth of material, as if the universe itself is force-feeding these stars, helping them grow far beyond what we once thought was possible helping them defy the Eddington limit. But one detail stood out. Many streamers aren't symmetrical. They don't feed the disk evenly from all sides. Some only appear on one side, which means the inflow of gas may not be smooth or uniform. It could come from dense clumps in the cloud, from nearby stars, or even from the scattered remains of past stellar explosions. The deeper we look into star formation, the clearer it becomes. Stars don't grow in isolation. They're born into a web of complexity, a vast, dynamic network, where matter, gravity, and time move together in a cosmic dance of creation. And if streamers are real, if they're essential to forming the universe's biggest stars, then maybe radiation pressure was never the final limit. Maybe the true boundary isn't in the light. It's in the structure of space itself. In the hidden pathways, the unseen currents flowing just beyond our line of sight. Because if the accretion disk is the heart of a forming star, then streamers, they're the arteries, cosmic lifelines, nurturing stars from light years away. For a long time, we believed the laws of physics were unbreakable. Boundaries written into the fabric of the universe. Fixed. Absolute. But now, new observations are showing us something different. People massive stars don't just exist. They might actually be common. In star-forming regions like Cepheus A, the environment is far from peaceful. Magnetic fields shift. Temperatures rise and fall. Ancient supernovae send shockwaves through clouds of interstellar gas. And it's in that chaos, not in spite of it, but because of it, that massive protostars begin to grow. Not in quiet, orderly conditions, 
but in turbulence, in randomness, in extremes. Maybe the universe isn't breaking the rules. Maybe we just haven't read the full rule book yet. It's like picking up a physics textbook, reading the first few pages, and assuming we've mastered the subject. These massive stars might be the italicized footnotes. Rare, yes, but full of clues. Clues about how nature really works and how it adapts in ways we're only beginning to understand. So, if stars can grow far beyond what we once believed, what else might be defying our theories? The first galaxies? Really, the black holes at their cores? Or maybe the very way we perceive reality itself? Perhaps the universe isn't breaking its laws. It's following a deeper version of them, a version we haven't yet learned to decode. And maybe that's what makes the cosmos so breathtaking. Every answer we uncover leads to even bigger questions and deeper mysteries waiting just beyond the horizon. What do you think about these so-called rule-breaking stars? Let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to keep exploring the cosmos with us, consider subscribing to Astro for more journeys like this one.